Hi, this is Tim. In this video, we're gonna talk about proportional integral control. And that is the first two parts of the PID equation. In this video, we will be using our Compact Logics PLC trainer, and we're gonna be using Industrial Concepts PID trainer. And I'll put links to both of them in the description. In our previous videos, we've gone through how to set up your basic PIDE equation. We've talked about proportional control, and we've talked about integral control. In this video, we're going to talk about how they work together. Because one thing I hear that is not true is people say that the proportional does most of the work and the integral just does this little small part of it. So people will put a PIDE instruction in and they won't worry about the I or the D. They'll just put a P value or proportional value and then their PID doesn't work. So let's go through this and we need to make a few changes to our integral program from the last video because we made some programming changes to look specifically at what the integral does. So let's open up our PID program and go into the PID routine. And on our PIDE instruction, we have this fixed level we were using on our integral video. We need to put that back as our actual level. So let's edit this sheet and change that fixed level to level in inches. And go ahead and put that into our program. And then we had changed our periodic task time to one second so that we could slowly see what was happening. But I wanna put that back to 100 milliseconds. So let's go to properties of our PID task and go to configuration and right now we're at a thousand milliseconds. Let's take that back to a hundred milliseconds. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure a trend. Actually, we're gonna configure a trend and a watch window so we can get everything we need to see on one screen. Let's open up our assets and find trends. And we're gonna right click new trend and I'm just gonna call this our PI trend. And the default 10 milliseconds will be fine. And then for our tags, first we want that level in inches. And don't forget to hit the add button. And then we want that next tag there, level set point. And then I want switch one that we're using to go into auto mode and that's on input four. So we're gonna go to local colon one colon I dot data four and then click finish so this is going to make a trend that we can see these values now let's make a few changes to it before we even start let's go to chart properties and let's look at our y-axis and let's put a custom min and max of zero and ten and then on our x-axis, let's change our time span to minutes and make it one minute. Now we're going to see zero to 10 up through here, and we're going to see a minute's worth of data through here. And go ahead and click run. All right, and it looks like we have our level in inches down here and also our own office down here. Let's just switch, switch one so we can see no doubt we get a signal from it. That should have our trend set up. So now what we want to do is we want to use a watch window so that we can look at the P, I, and D gains. So go to view and watch, and let's go to our PIDE instruction. Now remember, you ch chances are you're using PIDE underscore zero one. But in one of my videos back there, we ended up using number two where we were showing something. So I'm going to go into it and I want to scroll down and find the P gain and bring it in. And then let's do another one. And right below that P gain, you're going to see an I gain. And finally, we want to bring in the D gain. Now we can see our proportional, integral, and derivative gains 
along with our trend screen all at the same time. So we should be able to get a really good view. In fact, I take this error tab out and that'll give us a little more height here. Now, first, let's kind of bust this myth that you only need the proportional to make the thing run. So we're gonna put in a value of zero there. And we're going to put in, I don't know, let's just put in 100 for our proportional. And then we're gonna switch switch one on and you can see our proportional is not really doing anything, even though we've got it cranked way up there. So you cannot really make a PIDE instruction work with just putting in a proportional value. And the reason that people say this is they are looking at a position controlled PID. Alan Bradley's PID is a velocity controlled PID. And some people who are really super smart with some math can tell you that you can derive one from the other, but that's not where we're going in this video. We're mainly gonna to go to the fact that you do need the integral to make this work. In fact, I can make this run with integral alone. But if you recall from a proportional video, it requires a change in the error to have a change of proportional control. So unless something upsets the process, like if we were to shake the ball or something, then we're never really gonna get an output. That little bit of jumping we were seeing has mainly because yeah, it is kind of sitting there bouncing and I put the proportional way up there. But all right, now let's do the opposite. Let's take our proportional to zero and let's take our integral to 30. And now let's turn it on. All right, and we see it did come up and we can see on our trend even here, it came up, it's gonna dip down. And yeah, okay, it's kind of up and down because this is trying to correct that error over time, which is what we learned the integral does. Now this is a horribly tuned PID, but you know, honestly, for a lot of applications, that would probably work just fine. But now let's see what we could do with it using the proportional control. Because mainly what we saw here is that it shot up way too much. Well, we can use the proportional to actually kind of stop that action from happening. So I'm gonna put a proportional in of, let's just start with 0.1. And now we'll turn it on. All right, we still got an overshoot, but I should have taken a picture of the last one so you could see the difference. So really quickly, I'm gonna change that 0.1 on the proportional to 0.5. And now we're gonna switch switch one. All right, and you see there was minimal overshoot. Now we did have some dip here afterwards, but this second one looks much better than this first one. Now let's show what happens if you go too far though, is let's put the proportional at one and try it now. All right, so you saw that it kind of, even over here you can see it surged up and then it kind of got there and it surged a little more well, this is too much proportional. So we're reacting too much to the change in the error. So let's take it to 0.75 and try it again. All right, so you see we had some hesitation, but we really didn't have any overshoot this time. I don't know, between that and the other one, it's the best so far. So our proportional, at least for a I of 30, probably needs to be between 0.5 and 0.75. Now let's say we wanted to change our eye though. Let's say that maybe it's too aggressive. Let's take our eye to 20. And we'll try it again. So now since our eye value, our integral value is lower, it's gonna take longer to adjust over time. And also you can see that proportional we're getting a lot more back and forth. Our proportional now is too high for this particular integral. So there is no perfect proportional or perfect integral. 
As you change one, the other will need changed. So we see it's too much. We're going to try 0.5 now. All right, and yeah, we did have a little sag, same as that sag there, but okay, overall that's better. Now let's try going the other way though. We were at 30 on our integral, we went to 20, let's take it to 40. And now it shoots up much faster than it did with the 20, definitely, or the 30. But you see we got a bad overshoot here. So we can use that proportional to stop that overshooting and kind of curve that error in. So let's bring our proportional up a little to 0.6. All right, so that is better, but we, we definitely have some oscillation going on here still. And yeah, we're going to need to lower that proportional, but we're starting to get some overshoots. So we're probably not going to be able to run this aggressively, but let's just try point A just to see what happens. All right, and you see we're getting some oscillation here. So I'm going to lower that integral back down. Let's just try 35. Okay, so we're still having a lot of zigzagging. It seems like this 35 is still a little high. So I'm going to take it to 32. And let's try it one more time here. Okay, so that came in okay. And we probably could work with it a little more and get it better. So I hope that helps you understand the relationship between the proportional and the integral. And what I would recommend here is really play with this. Set the integral with something and then play with the proportional to see how it affects whether it overshoots, whether it undershoots, whether we get an oscillation. Also, let's make sure we understand that there is no true proportional control when we're using this particular equation. If you set your proportional at something and your integral and your derivative at zero, you will get no action out of your PID output. And also, I know somebody will ask why I didn't use some of the tuning models with the data I gathered to come up with the optimal proportional and integral gains. And the reason I didn't is I really wanted this to be light on the math. I don't want to dumb down the math. The math is super important, but really I want us to understand exactly what does that P portion of PID do? And what does that I portion of PID do? Now, I'll probably have to throw the light on the math out the window for derivative. I haven't come up with a super easy way to do derivative without some math, but I think we can do it even with minimal math and help you understand what it is. Because, you know, I, 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 I've had several people tell me since starting this series that the D is for do not use. And that is not true. The D has a purpose. Now, the D may not be important for your particular application, but you can do a lot with the derivative of the PID. So I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks again to Industrial Concepts for working with us on this series. And please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.